Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shila Prabhupada. Welcome you all to His Holiness Chandramali Maharaj's daily call. I hope you all are well. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining the call, Maharaj. We know that uh, you have got a very busy schedule currently, but thank you so much for joining. Uh, so today's verse is Shrimad Bhagavatam, for, um, second canto, first chapter, and ninth verse. I uh, will be just give me a second. I will start the live and also it's already started. I think yeah. I will start sharing the screen. Just give me a second. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
Hari Nishtito Vin Hari Nishtito Vinagunya Uttama Sloka Lilaya Grihita Chaita Rajar Se Akyanam Yar Abditavan O saintly king, I was certainly situated perfectly in transcendence, yet I was still attracted by the delineation of the pastimes of the Lord, who is described in enlightened verses. The absolute truth is realized. There we go. One minute. <laughs> Get some sun now. The absolute truth is realized at the first instance as the impersonal Brahman by philosophical speculation and later as a super soul by further progress of transcendental knowledge. But if, by the grace of the Lord, impersonal is enlightened by the superior statements of Srimad Bhagavatam, he is also converted into the transcendental devotee of the personality of Godhead. With a poor fund of knowledge, we cannot adjust to the idea of personality of the absolute truth, and therefore the personal activities of the Lord are deplored by the less intelligent impersonalists. But reasons and arguments together with transcendental processes of approaching the absolute truth help even the staunch impersonalists to become attracted by the personal activities of the Lord. A person like Sukadev Goswami cannot be attracted by any mundane activity, but when such a devotee is convinced by a superior method, he is certainly attracted by the transcendental activities of the Lord. The Lord is transcendental, and as are his activities, he is neither inactive nor impersonal. Chaksun Melitam Yena Tats, my Shri Guravena Maha. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale. Svayam Bhupakadam Mayam Dadati Swampadanti Kam. Namau Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale. Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta. Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve. Gauravani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunivari Paschatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Taru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Pe Vacha Patitanam Pavane Pu Vaishnave Vyona Mahona Maha Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Siyadvaita Gadathar Srivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Vadanti tat tat vad vidvams tat jnanam yavayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavaniti sabjate. So the absolute truth is one but it is understood in three features of that same oneness. Impersonal mm -hmm. Brahma, Jyoti, the all-pervading spiritual essence, which is found throughout both the spiritual and material worlds. The Lord situated in the hearts of all living entities, super soul, which is understood by further knowledge of the absolute truth and complete knowledge of the absolute truth is that the personality of Godhead is the source of the other two aspects of the absolute truth. Personality, impersonal, comes from personal and not vice versa. Just like the energy of the sun comes from the sun, the sun is localized in one place, but the energy is pervaded everywhere. Similarly, the spiritual energy is pervaded everywhere, which is the impersonal aspect of the Lord. Um, but the personality of God is, is the source of that energy. And he is the absolute principle of complete knowledge of the absolute truth. Um, 
because the impersonalists think that material and spiritual are opposite. Therefore, in the material world, everything is personal, and therefore they think impersonal. And then, but they cannot understand, nor do they have the ability to uh, to understand that personality, spiritual personality, is not within the same definition and category of material personality. Where material personality is within the limited sphere of material energy, and therefore it's limited. But spiritual personality is within the range of unlimited. And therefore, Krishna's personal feature, or him himself as his personal feature, contains everything of the absolute truth, both personal and impersonal. As the sun contains both the localized part and also contains the sun god, who is the personality of the sun, and it also has the energy of the sun, which is the sunshine, which is pervaded throughout the universe. So those who uh, have a limited understanding, Mayavadis, the impersonalists, cannot understand the personal feature of the Lord. And then they accept the impersonal because the impersonal is all pervading and they think that spiritual is all pervading and material is not, therefore impersonal is higher or they say personal is is in one place and um, impersonal is all pervading. Therefore, they say that impersonal is the actual essence of the absolute truth and the source of all personalities. But we find the opposite within, even in the realm of material, where the energy of a person, that means the activities that the person performs, and the characteristics and paraphernalia which the person uses is more or less to his impersonal feature of himself, which is this, which is coming from the personal feature, not vice versa. So everything is personal. Even the impersonal is personal when it's connected to the personal. So we can see this from a practical example also. You can't have a relationship with something that is impersonal. Relations are from person to person. So ultimately, the relationship with the absolute truth in its complete form is Krishna in his personal form or any of the manifestations of the absolute truth in their personal form. So that is the highest and complete, and that's the more, the word is complete aspect of the absolute truth. It's like the impersonal cannot love, the impersonal cannot uh, exist, show certain characteristics and qualities. But when you find a personality, then you understand that personality also is characterized by certain qualities and, and characteristics. So that's why we can say that the absolute truth is personal because it exhibit the Lord is exhibiting certain qualities and characteristics which cannot come from the impersonal aspect of the Lord. So we have the example here of Sukadeva Goswami who was impersonal until he heard the transcendental narrations of the Srimad Bhagavatam by his um, father uh, Vishila Vyasadev, and then he immediately came to the level of realizing the personal nature of the Lord, because the Bhagavatam, as we heard from previous verses, is the complete understanding of the absolute truth in both its personal and impersonal understanding. And we also have the example of the four Kumaras, who were, they weren't Mayavadis, but they were impersonalists. They were worshiping the absolute truth as the highest in the impersonal feature. But when they were traveling in the Vaikuntha realm, they came in contact with the lotus feet of the Lord 
by smelling the tulsi leaves and sandalwood paste offered to those to those lotus feet. Immediately their minds changed and they adopted the mood of personality or the personal feature of the Lord. He, even us in the material world, we, before we came to Krishna consciousness, we were very impersonal. And that, that means we put more emphasis on relationships based on energy rather than the source of the energy. Just like people want money. So that's the impersonal energy of the Lord. People want position. That's the impersonal energy of the Lord. So anything material is coming from the Lord itself and it's impersonal. That's why in Western civilizations, people don't worship the impersonal aspect of the Lord, but they worship it through the material energy by the characteristics of the energy of the impersonal which are the successes of the material energy. Whereas those who are more connected with the Vedic tradition worship the impersonal aspect of the Lord through the process of Jnana Yoga and uh, uh, Astanga Yoga, which is also, Jnana Yoga is included in Astanga Yoga. So, uh, for devotees, we worship the absolute truth and his personal feature. We come to the temple, we see the beautiful form of the deity, and the deity has form, the deity has qualities, the deity has characteristics. And there are many, many pastimes, even within the material realm, of deities walking, deities talking, deities eating, deities leaving, all of these things are there in the history of de deity worship. Uh, so we have the story of Shakshi Gopal, when two Brahmanas, one young Brahmana and one old Brahmana, they came from the same village. And the young Brahmana served the old Brahmana very nicely. The old Brahmana was quite wealthy, and the young Brahmana, he was a Brahmana, but he was very poor. So he served the old Brahmana, who was quite wealthy. And they came and they met uh, Gopal in Vrindavan, the beautiful Gopal deity. And then uh, the other Brahmana was so grateful for the service of the younger Brahmana, he wanted to give him some reward. So he said, well, I have a beautiful young daughter of marriageable age. Therefore, I want to offer my daughter to you in marriage. You have served me so nicely. The young Brahmin was kind of shocked because he understood he was from a different gotra, you know, a different economic bracket, and it was unheard of that the, young, the older Brahmin, who was quite wealthy, would give his daughter to a lower person in a lower status. But... And therefore, he questioned him. But the Brahmin said, no, no. You know, I am. I make the decisions in the family. And therefore, I have decided to give my daughter to you. And then the young Brahmin said, well, if you, if you actually promise, then promise before the deity of Gopal. And so they did. He made the promise before the deity. And he said to the Gopal that I promise to give this my daughter, in marriage to this young Brahmana. After some time, they both returned to their village. And then after some time, the, the old Brahmana had forgotten what the promise he had made, but the young Brahmana reminded him, not because he wanted his daughter, but because he wanted him to keep his um, promise before the deity, because he knew if he broke his promise that he gave before the deity, this would cause him to fall in his devotional service. So to protect the old Brahmin's uh, uh, devotional service, he reminded him. And then the Brahmin said, oh, yes. But then he, when he re revealed it to his uh, wife and family, the wife was shocked. She, was, uh, she said, if you give my daughter to that boy, I'll commit. I'll take poison and commit suicide. The 
the brother of the girl, the, the son of the old Brahmana, he became very upset. And he said, how could you do that? And then they were, then the, the old Brahmin's mind became really confused that his wife's going to commit suicide. His son is really angry. And so he's thinking, you know, what to do. And then the young Brahmana, not the young Brahmana, but the son of the old Brahmana, he was somewhat of a smarta Brahmana. He was pretty much somewhat atheistic. He said, you know, you can just say you forgot, you know, giving uh, my sister to him. And then when he comes, I'll take over. So when the boy came, the old Brahmana said, I had forgotten. And then the son of the Brahmana starts saying, well, you, you're a rascal. You cheated my father. You stole all his money. And now you want my sister for marriage. He picked up a stick. He was going to chastise this, this, this young Brahmana. The young Brahmana ran away, but then he went to the villagers and he called the villagers and told them this is the situation. So they all called. <clears throat> they came together and they were discussing it. What was the situation? And then it was brought up by the uh, young Brahmana that he made his promise before the deity of Gopal. So the son of the Brahmana was atheist. Well, if he made a promise before Gopal, then let Gopal become the witness to this promise. He was thinking, how is it possible? The deity will never come because he's a deity. And everyone agreed. All the, all the villagers agreed. Yes, 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 yes. And so then the young Brahmana, he went back to Vrindavan, which was a really a long way. He was in Vidyanagar, which was about a thousand miles away. Sure. And he traveled back to Vrindavan and he came before Gopal. And then he said, Gopal, you have to come and bear witness to see older Brahman has made a promise. Now he doesn't want to fulfill his promise. You, He gave, gave the promise before you, so you become the witness. And uh, the deity spoke to him and said, how can I come? I'm a deity. I can't walk. And then uh, the young Brahmana, as Prabhupada describes his story, he said, if you can talk, you can walk. <laughs> he said that to Krishna. <laughs> and Krishna agreed, all right, I'll come. But the condition is, I'll walk behind you, and you'll know I'm behind you by my ankle bells, and you don't turn around to see where I am. You know I'm behind you. You can hear the sound of my ankle bells. And every day you cook for me one kilo of rice for my prashadam. So it was agreed. And then the young Brahmin left. And Gopal, the deity, followed him. And then they were getting close to the village. Finally, when they came to the outskirts of the village, the young Brahmin could not hear the ankle bounds of Gopal anymore. So he turned around. When he turned around, he saw the deity there. And then he ran into the village and called over the village members and everyone, and they all came to see that the deity actually did come and walked. And because of that, you know, the young Brahmana was victorious. Krishna came as the witness. And that same deity is called Shakshi Gopal. He's there in and he's about five five to six hours away from the area of Jagannath Puri, the beautiful temple there called Shakshi Gopal, the witness deity, who walked all the way from Vrindavan just to uh, serve his devotee, who made a promise that he would give his daughter in marriage. That's a wonderful pastime. So um, we see in the history of Vaishnava culture and deity worship, many times deities have talked, they have walked, they have eaten prasadam. So when you're standing before the deity, you're not, you shouldn't be thinking about well, just some stone, some wood. It's actually Krishna himself in the, in the form of what is called archa vigraha. And that means he's there for the worship 
of the devotee, he comes in his personal form just to accept our worship like that. So anyone who thinks that the deed is made out of stone or wood or any material element that says their minds are dwell within hell. Arche Vishnu Sila Di, Guru Shu Nomati, Vaishnava Jati Bhuti, and then the verse ends, very long verse. Um, I'll see if you can find that verse. Uh, Arche, A R C I A, Arche, Vishnu. It's a beautiful verse. It has many meanings to it, but one of them is about seeing the deity in the material world. A R C A. R.J. Vishnu, Sila D. That's the verse, R.J. Vishnu, Sila D. You can find that verse. Uh -huh. Where is that verse? Find the verse itself. It's from the Padma Purana, Arche Vishnu Siladi. Mm -hmm. That's not it. Arche Vishnu Sila Di. Guru Shu. No, Guru Shu is the one after that. Yeah, here, this this one here, the one second one here, that's the one. Hit there and you'll get the verse. Should get the verse. One who who one should not consider the deity of the Lord as worship in the temple to be an idol, nor should one consider an authorized spirit. Of, nor should one consider to belong to a particular caste. There's much more to it. I want to get the whole verse. Mm -hmm. The whole verse is somewhere, listed somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's a very strong verse. Mm -hmm. Is it is it in Padma Purana? Then I can search, we can search Padma Purana. My other one. Padma Purana, for sure. Mm -hmm. Sila D. Maybe you can continue uh, the class and I'll find it for you in the site. Is that okay, Kumaraj? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take your time. It might take some time, maybe. Sorry. You can't. You can't. Stop. Close yes. to it. Let me see if I get in. A, it's probably listed in many of the, not many, but some of the, uh, some of the verses in the, and some of the more regular scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam and others. Um, if, I, if I can run, here we go. Okay, she's got it. Guru Sunam Mati Vaishnava Jati Bhuti Si Vishnu Nama Sabda Samaya. But get, the, get both the, the Sanskrit and the translation in one place. Hmm. It's worth uh, it's a very powerful verse. Because it not only deals with that aspect but many other aspects, yeah. This is not the whole verse in here. <clears throat> Mm 
Yeah, there you go. You found it. You can find it there, maybe. Or no, chapter 13. Yeah, there you go. Can't find it, huh? No, it has brought me here, but I can't see it. All right. Well, anyway, yeah, you go to Madhya Leela twenty two seventeen. Okay. Yes, 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 Guru Maharaj. Yeah. It's, it is the verse, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not the translation. Vishnu Sila de Guru Shau Namati Vaishnava Vishnu Vaishnava Kala Mala Matai Paratirtam. It's a very long. No one should consider the deity of tomato, no one should consider a spiritual. Again, the Vaishnava to belong to it. No one should consider Charitamita or Ganges water to be like ordinary. Water, no one should consider the Hare Krishna Mahatma to be material vibrations. All these expenses are simply demonstration. And it goes on to say this word here, there's one word in here that's, what is it? Um, Naraki. Where is that word, Naraki? Naraki at the end, this one here. Yes, it's here. The word Naraki means hell. Mm. That means this last line says anyone who does that, their intelligence is coming from hell. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so it's a very strong statement to let you know that if you think like that, you, your intelligence is not no better than you know material hell. <laughs> so very strong verse, powerful. Prabhupada quotes it a lot. <laughs> yeah, so these are not only the deity, the guru, the Vaishnav, Charitamrita, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and also mentions Prashadam, also being one who thinks it's ordinary food. It's all there. Okay. Anyway, we can stop there and uh, open it up for discussion. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. It's a very nice uh, explanation of the personal and in-person and the form of the Lord. Um, uh, devotees, if you have any questions, comments, realization, please unmute yourself and ask. Uh, you can also type in the chat and I can read it for you. And it will be nice to have your cameras on if you can, please. Thank you. Um, so while we're waiting for others to um, uh, you know, ask questions, Guru Maharaj, I've got a question about, uh, in one of the class you mentioned that, you know, Srila Prabhupada used to say that if uh, if Christians are pure, you know, follow their pure Christianity, if they're, you know, they're following it properly, then they're, they're the same as, you know, uh, same as being a true Krishna conscious person. So does it mean that, uh, that following because, you know, Christian Christianity, and if they follow the impersonalism of the Lord, you know, form of the Lord, can someone reach to the uh, to the same state as someone who is you know worshiping the personal form of the Lord? Is someone who is worshiping the impersonal? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Then we had the example in the uh, four Kumaras. Yeah, Sukadev Goswami. Both of them were fixed on the impersonal Brahman. But coming in contact with uh, Bhagavatam, coming in contact with the lotus feet of the Lord, they all became personalists. So there has to be some connection with the personal form, like either you take prashad or you know you smell tulsi leaves, something. Yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. And that doesn't like for for Kumara's case, it has happened instantly, like you know that happened, but for People in this world, it might take you know number of births to to come to that platform basically. 
No, it depends on the individual. Depends how conditioned they are. How how unable they are to understand transcendental knowledge. Yeah. Process is fast or slow depending on the person. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when we give, you know, when we say that even touching a Bhagavad Gita or taking a, you know, bite of prashadam uh, will help someone. So, it's basically the starting of the journey to to that. Yeah, but it's not that there's no awareness of that. It's just the seed has been planted. That's all. When you plant a seed in the ground, there's no plant. But the seed is there. If you give it the proper watering process, it'll grow. So when yes. people come in contact with devotees or devotional service, the seed is planted. Now it's a matter of watering it by continual association and and uh, spiritual activities. It helps. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Devotees, any other questions from anyone? Otherwise, I've got another question. And uh, otherwise, but I'll wait for a few seconds if someone can respond. If... Yes, yeah, Devi Mataji, please come out. Thank you, Satyabhama. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Prabhupada. This uh, impersonalism and personalism is a little difficult for me to understand when it comes to great personalities such as Shukadev Goswami, who says, I was situated perfectly in transcendence. Yet, I was still attracted by the delineation of the pastimes of the Lord, who is described by enlightened verses. So, when uh, Shukadev Goswami is already perfectly situated in transcendence, how is it that uh, the impersonal uh, aspect is known to him and then he gets enlightened and understands the personal aspect? Is that how we should understand that? Uh, well, mm, let me see. Baba says, if you, uh, I mean, you see the sun, the sun is like localized. The sun rays are everywhere. But in the planet, there is the sun god. You can't see the sun god, but he is the he is the controller of the energy of the sun. So you have in that, you have the three aspects, person, localized, energy. So in the impersonal, you're situated in the pure energy of the, the spiritual energy. But there's no awareness of the personality. Only when you engage and connect with something of the absolute truth, then that that personal aspect can be revealed, like Srimad Bhagavatam in the case of Sukadeva Goswami. So that contact is there. It's like you know, some I don't know if this is a good example, but Food, there's many kinds of food, but there's that kind of food that are really something you really like. So when you're hungry, you may just accept whatever is being offered. But then if you have a choice, you might also choose that which you like. So when we go to more of the essence of what we're doing, we come to a more higher realization of that same activity. So the essence of spiritual knowledge is the personality of Godhead. So the impersonalist also can be purely in transcendence, but they have not realized the personal feature of the Lord. Is that is yeah. that a correct? Yeah, but there's no devotional service there. Uh-huh. And therefore, it's explained Aruta Krishna Padam Padam Padanti Adam Arudya Krishna. Let me see. That's in the. Uh, go to the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Look up that verse. Aruya A H U R Y A is the first word. Tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. 
and do a search on the word Aruya, A-H-U-R-Y-A. Ten two thirty two. Okay. And oh, yay, yeah, no, no, that, that's another verse. Yay, yeah, now, Ravinda, the book so much. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Ye ne ravindaksa vi mukta mani nas tvavasta bhava avasuda buddhaya aruya krishchena padam padam tata padatiyadam madrita yusma hangraya. So read that. Someone may say that aside from devotees who always seek shelter at the Lord's lotus feet, there are those who are not devotees but who have accepted different processes for attaining salvation. What happens to them? In answer to this question, Lord Brahma and the other demigods said, O lotus-eyed Lord, although non-devotees who accept severe austerities and penances to achieve the highest position may think themselves liberated, their intelligence is impure. They fall down from their position of imagined superiority because they have no regard for your lotus feet. Yeah, so that's many of the spiritualists, they, they go to high positions, but they fall down because there's no devotional service. And so you can read the purport there. Sure. At least the first part. Yeah, sure. Aside from devotees, there are many others, non-devotees, known as karmis, jnanis, or yogis, philanthropies, elutris, sorry, I can't pronounce that, altruistis. Um, Altruist. Polit Altruist. Politicians, uh, impersonalist, and voidist. There are many varieties of non-devotees who have their respective waves of uh, ways of liberation, but simply because they do not know the shelter of the Lord's lotus feet, although they falsely think that they have been liberated and elevated to the highest position, they fall down, as clearly stated by the Lord Himself in Bhagavad Gita 9.3. Sorry, yeah. Those who have who are not faithful on the path of devotional service cannot attain me. Yeah, oh, conqueror. You can stop now. Yes, sure. Okay. So the point is that because they don't take shelter of the Lord's lotus feet, they fall down. But those who do take shelter of the Lord's lotus feet, such as the examples we have is Sukadev Goswami, the four Kumaras. They rise to the higher stages and realize the personality of Godhead. So from the impersonal position, unless you go to the personal, you'll fall down from the impersonal. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That verse is clear. Many devotees, Guru Maharaj, like um, I have a question on this that you know, many people we move, meet at the time of you know book distribution or just maybe in a preaching time. And if they are impersonalist and uh, they ask so many questions and they discuss. So I'm sure the discussions and this question and answer uh, would raise a little bit of desire in their heart that uh, what devotees are talking about basically, you know, that Lord have a personal form. Do you think even that desire of that minimum desire would take them somewhere? that one day Lord will be merciful and, you know, will bring their faith that Lord has a personal form? Oh, if they have some, if they inquire in the right direction, yeah, sure. Why not? It's not that you have to be stuck on the impersonalist. Mm -hmm. Look, most of us who are practicing devotional service, we're all impersonalists. And some of us are still are. <laughs> Because we want something other than Krishna. 
therefore we're impersonalist. <laughs> That's a very good, big, good point, Guru Maharaj. Very, very nice. Yes, Sridhari Mataji, please go ahead. I'm sorry, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around this Guru Maharaj. Shukadev Goswami was uh, taught by Vyasadev himself in the womb and he came out perfectly self-realized. So how is it that he is impersonalist? Well, before then, he was an impersonalist. Oh, okay. So after gaining the knowledge, then he became personalist. Yeah. Okay. He is an eternal associate of Radharani. Sometimes people say he's he's Sukha, her parrot. There's many stories about his life before he actually became Sukadev Goswami. So yeah, it's not that we're beginning from where he where he realized that he he was a Brahmavadi. Brahmavadis are one level of spiritual realization. That's all. What's why? What's so hard to understand? <laughs> Mayavadis are envious. They won't accept the personal aspect of the Lord, no matter how much. They come in contact with it. And they'll always turn it into something impersonal. <clears throat> but the Brahmavadis are non-envious. And therefore, if they hear from the right person or exposed to the personal feature of the Lord, they'll give up their impersonal and come to the platform of devotional service. You're still a Maya body. That's why you can't understand. <laughs> no, Guru Maharaj, I'm not Maya body. Please, I really am not Maya body. I humbly beg you to please not call me Maya body. Oh, you you think you're Sri Devi? That's why you. Can't... <laughs> Dasi, Dasi. That's all I am, Dasi. But uh, not Mayavadi. Mayavadi is Krishna Pradi. Oh, no, 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 Guru Maharaj. Not Mayavadi. All right. <laughs> we can accept that except until you ask your next question. <laughs> so it's very easy to understand. I don't know why it's so hard to understand. I think Gurmara, she is asking question for all of us. I think I don't think she is, she ever asked questions for herself. She's already so knowledgeable. No, 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 no. But Please don't say anything like that. I really us. wanted she's to so understand humble. because I was very curious that how from impersonal aspect, how he came to personal. If he's impersonalist, how he became personalist. But now Guru Maharaj has explained clearly he is Brahmavadi. He is not Mayavadi. The Brahmavadis are not offenders to the Lord. Yeah, right. two kinds of impersonalists. Right, thank you. Any other questions, devotees? Uh, otherwise, I've got a question, Guru Maharaj, about the you know the last verse when when you read about that. If you don't see a deity, if you see a deity as in you know uh, in a wood or uh, stone, um, and uh, if you see if you do that, then uh, then you will be placed in Narak in hell. So sometimes I've seen that, you know, devotees and it's, I think it's, it's all of us, like whoever, like the deities, we serve, we are very close to that deity, but uh, other deities we just ignore, or maybe we, we don't see Krishna as much as we see in our own deity. So Even if you don't see it, you should know that it's Krishna. It's Krishna. You can accept the fact that it's Krishna. It's not like if you don't see it, you go to hell. It's not like that. It's just that means your intelligence is cultivated by, you know, things that come from hell. It doesn't mean you go to hell. <laughs> You're already living in hell with that consciousness. <laughs> True. Other 
that's very helpful. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, Rasa Vilas Nimati ji. Yes, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada, all glories to you and Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, Brahmavadi and Nirakarvadi, they both are same. Yeah, Niraka means without form. Nir means no, na Aka means form. Niraka means no form. Okay, Maharaj, thank you. Okay, thank you. So Shridevi Mataji has posted the message from Srila Prabhupada that London is hell. <laughs> well, yes, Shridevi. You can rescue me and get me out of this place. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, I have a question just as a follow-up of what Rasavillasini asked. So the Shunyavadis, the ones who say everything is zero, what is their um, what is their belief and where do they get the idea everything is zero and how are they different from Mayavadis? They're atheists. Uh, what's it? Sankara Shari talks about them. Nirvisesha Sunyavadi. Sunyavadi means that they the forms are, for, are features of suffering. So you want to come to the ultimate principle of formlessness where there's no form. But you can't do that. It's artificial. Everything has form. So they want to zero out all the forms. And therefore, that means that they live in this concept of no form or formlessness. That's the Buddhist, mostly. And therefore, they cultivate... <clears throat> they cultivate good qualities as a way for worship. Mm -hmm. They have good qualities, qualities of the mode of goodness, but still they have no they have no no understanding of the soul nor the of the understanding of the. So they say when you reach perfection, you become nothing. <laughs> Therefore, if you become nothing, there's no suffering, right? That's their logic. I'm suffering because I'm something. I become nothing, then I can get rid of my suffering. But how can you become nothing? Because you are, you are a soul. But they don't have any any uh, knowledge of the soul, nor do they believe in the soul. There's a few books that are out. I just saw a new one: Buddhism and Krishna Consciousness. You can compare it. But there's different kinds of Buddhism. But general Buddhism is Sunyavadi. There's those who are a little bit personal. That's the, uh, what is it? There's the Theravada Buddhas. There's the Hin Hinyavada Buddhas. And there's the, uh, what is the other ones that, uh, can't, the ones that are really heavy. I can't remember them. Uh, Sure, you know, Sri, Sri Devi. The ones they 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 hit you with a stick, and they say, you know, there's no real pain there, but if you feel pain, that means you're still in illusion, because pain is an illusion. What is it called? What those Buddhists are called? Is it Zen, Ma uh, Maharaj? Yeah. Is it Zen? Zen Buddhism, right, yeah. Yeah, Zen Buddhism. Zen, Hinayana, Mayayana, Theravada, there's different kind of Buddhas. Some of them worship Kuan Yin, which is a deity form of the absolute, not the absolute truth, they're deity anyway, they worship Kuan Yin. And in Hong Kong, Kuan Yin is a lady. 
in Japan and Hong Kong as a uh, Kuan Yin is as a male form. Oh, you can read all about this. There's books about it. Yes, she did Mataji, please come. I have one more question, Guru Maharaj. Uh, what do the Jains, uh, uh, what is their philosophy? The Jainism philosophy is also very prominent. What are they, uh, what is their belief? Jainism is a created, creation of, a, of, it's an extension of Buddhism. Um, let's see. In the, go to the fifth canto. And just do a search on Jainism from the fifth canto. You had it. I don't know why you erased it. J A N I S M. J A N I S M. Jainism. Let's see. Okay, okay, go go back, go up to the top. According to Srimad describes how Lord Rishabhadev incarnated to save souls from Maya and how his religious principles can free one from the bondage and, and end atheist activities. The Srimad Bhai also mentioned who imitated Rishabhadev and gave up the, to create a new symbol which became the beginning of Jainism. Go to five, nine, five, six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Hare Krishna Maharaj is a 5, 6, 10 where it's uh, mentioned about uh, King Arhat. Yeah, if you can just keep it. You, you, why you keep jumping around there like a monkey? Just keep it in one place. <laughs> this is 5, 6, 9. Should I go to 5, 6, 10? Right there. This is, yeah. Let's see. Keep going. Go down the page and go to the purport. Uh, this is the purport to manage. He introduced the religion, took advantage of the following, and the people and were more inclined. The people, uh, due to they forget that the baby following the Nava, they, they think themselves as spring and then spread the call of atheism all over the world. Yeah, Jainism is atheism. So, yes, many of the so called is followed this atheistic system. Yeah, go to, go to the next verse, maybe number 10, yes. if it is more knowledge of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, here he goes. Here he goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Presently, the hippies of the Western Sud, they do not bathe. No, they just they contact with it. And many hippies of King Arhat, King Harden, and him. The followers went under Jains and they were later followed by uh, particularly the hippies who were more or less offshoots of Mayavad philosophy because they think themselves as the supreme. So it's a Kali Yuga religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kali Yuga religion. Says in this in, in this age, uh, look look up Buddhism in this same section here. Buddhism. Go for Buddhism. Just do a search on Buddhism. You spell it. B u d d h i s m. Double D. H i s m. I s m. No, it's not here. I'll I'll just search here. 
I don't know how you do things. You're, you're all over the place. You must be an atheist. <laughs> and this is for fifth canto only. I'm looking for not not the whole uh, Bhagavatam. Uh, just okay. Fifth canto. You better quit because I can't deal with you. You you're just too wild. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I just said stay in the fifth canto and look at Buddhism. Yeah, it's not letting me search on that page uh, for uh, you know low, lower details. So maybe I'm thinking I might try here. Yes, yeah, uh, maybe in five fifteen one. Maybe it's I don't know if that's but anyway. Yes, it's here, Lord Buddha Dev. Let's see, let's see here. Okay, here, here you go, purport. Go to purport. Don't jump all over the place like a monkey now. Yeah, sure. The Acharyas do not find them known as they are the Jain or the Jains. Not only that fun, but they have no relation with Lord imitating the behavior of Sun. And it says, where does it say here? It says that in this age, there's a place that says that in this age, Jainism and Buddhism has been created. They're both atheists, both atheistic religions. Okay. I guess I'm just looking at the fifth canto only. Yeah, okay. Go back to questions and answers now. Take my word for me, it's there somewhere in the fifth canto that it mentions that these two religions are not really religions, they're just they're just covered atheism. That's all it is. Thank you. Thanks. I think it was a question from Sri Devi Mataji. Sri Devi Mataji, you happy? She's she's there. Any other five fifty one. Okay. Do you want me to go back? No. no that's fine. Sukhava Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, O glorious to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your lotus feet. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I didn't understand why, why is Jainism an uh, atheist religion? Because they, the, so many principles are quite similar to Krishna consciousness. There's, there's no Where's the conception of the absolute truth? Hmm. There's no personal... There's no personal form, yeah. It's Maya Vadira. Worship this person called Mahavirya, hmm. who was a who was a naked saint. That's all. Okay. A renunciation alone is not is not uh, austerity and renunciation is not religion. It supports religion, but it's not religion. Hmm. It means to worship the absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Mm. Okay. Of God, mm. you know, it's either impersonal or atheistic, either one. Mm. Only when the personal aspect, that's why Christianity is personal, <clears throat> personal religion. But they have a very simplified understanding of the, the nature of the personality of Godhead, they don't have a very detailed understanding. They call him God the Father. Mm. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Sukhavi Mataji. Um, I think there are no other questions, uh, Guru Maharaj. So we can stop. If that's okay. We meditate on the impersonal void now for the rest of the time.
Or should we chant Hare Krishna? Yeah, <laughs> Hare Krishna. Like Maybe some of you would like to sit in the lotus position and, you know, uh, control the breath. <laughs> All right, get in your lotus position and get in <laughs> and drill the respiration. Okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, can I ask a question, please? Yes, Sir Bishpru. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shara Prabhupada. Uh, Maharaj, you know, uh, we say that our, our devotional life, uh, uh, our bhakti carries on from uh, life after life after life. So why was I born into a Jain family? If I have now come to Krishna consciousness. Well, you're fortunate. You can come from Krishna consciousness from any from any perspective in life. You can come from it as a, from an atheist also, which is, of course, there. So why were you born in Jain? I don't know. You have to ask that. You have to have to ask that to your parents. <laughs> uh, yeah, Prahlad Maharaj was born in a demoniac family. It doesn't mean because a person becomes a devotee that that they have devotee devotional thing in their previous life. It may be or may not be. So consider yourself fortunate you came in contact with the devotees and you were able to recognize something better, something higher. Personality, I mean, it's clear. People don't want to worship the personality of Godhead, even though they hear about it, because that means they have to surrender. They don't want to surrender. That's the point. People don't want to surrender. If they want to practice spirituality, they want to do it in their own way, and allow, which allows them to create their own false sense of freedom at the same time. But when you sort of, when you when you worship the personality of Godhead, you have to follow his guidance and direction. Mm. Otherwise the worship is not there. That's why people don't, you know, you, you see that today. There's an anti authoritative atmosphere where people don't want to follow authority. Even in the material sense. Same thing. Krishna is the supreme authority. But, they don't want to adhere to authority. That they think they can be happy by creating their own way of, of doing things, both in spiritual and material life. That's why there's chaos everywhere. <laughs> But one who has been blessed by the association of Krishna through the spiritual master can get out of that illusion. But that requires, you know, practice. And by associating with people who have faith, you develop faith. So by your association, you were able to overcome your past, uh, what we say, situation. It all depends on association. Krishna gives his association through those who worship him. And we take advantage to, of those who worship him, take that association, we become like them.
Thank you very much. I go. Yeah, we should start. Jai Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadar Har Sivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Ram Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Ram Hare Krishna Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare. Oh, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 